place that shows love. You just wanna have a good life, good life. Come to the west side, a great place to grow, yeah, yeah. a great place to know. Oh. For you and your family, near west side, the west side. Neighborhood of neighborhoods, yeah. Where we just love the people, so come to the west side. Please follow, like, and subscribe. Hello everyone. Um, thank you for watching first and foremost. Um, I will be jumping in here just to welcome you all um, first and then we'll get into the presentation for today. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Anne-Marie Gunn. I'm the Commercial Corridor Coordinator for Near West Side Partners. Um, so let me just present real quick. Um, so this weekly webinar, it's March 16th, and before we get into the presentation, just want to make some, you know, weekly announcements. Neighborhood House has a food pantry that you can attend and go to on Wednesdays from 12 to 2 and Thursdays from 4 to 6. Um, there's more details there. Pick out the items that you like best, select up to three days of food, and then it's available to all residents in the near west side. Um, we also will be having some neighborhood cleanups in the spring and summer and fall. And so these, these dates, you can keep an eye on our website, um, which I will show where to go um, for that as well. But we have several cleanups coming up, especially for Earth Day. We're really trying to promote that one so we can get out and make our neighborhood look good for, for that day. Um, and then a couple other dates there as well. Um, so again, you can go to our website and see any upcoming events that we have going on um, and other organizations are able to add um, events to that calendar as well in the near west side so that everyone can be aware of that. So yeah, always um, keep an eye on that and you can go to that link um, near west side mke.org slash news dash events. So um, before I get into the actual presentation, I do want to say that if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can type those in the chat on Facebook or in Zoom. We'll be monitoring both and I can answer any questions at the end. Um, so again, um, my role with Neuroside Partners is I'm the Commercial Corridor Coordinator. And so part of my job has been helping to implement these action activity projects. Um, and to give some more context of what we mean by action activity, you know, what does that even um, consist of? So in 2018, September 2018, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Department, um, they awarded Marquette and Near West Side Partners the Choice Neighborhood Initiative Planning Grant. Um, so this grant was nearly a million dollars and it was, it was, um, intended to be distributed to tangible physical projects that um, would be all throughout the near west side and so I will get into those projects that are being implemented currently and have been implemented um, but the goal of these projects was really to spur economic development and continue to build momentum through the neighborhood so that in includes um, safety focus, beautification focus, um, really attracting businesses. So all of the projects kind of have their unique goals, um, but overall those, um, the idea was kind of to improve the neighborhood in, in these ways. So um, prior to actually implementing these projects, we wanted to make sure that the projects were aligned with what the residents wanted. Um, of course, community engagement is always one of our focuses at Near West Side Partners. And so for two months, um, there was a planning team that kind of gathered this resident feedback um, and unfortunately, COVID had hit right before um, this feedback was, was being gathered, but we persisted and we got feedback in a very COVID safe way, all online platforms, and we were able to reach 2000 residents through those different um, platforms, you know, webinars like this one, phone calls, um, social media, text messages, email listservs, um, and surveys, just lots of um, technology was used to gain the feedback that we needed to, to really um, narrow down those projects. So first and foremost, we had 49 projects that kind of came out of the resident survey. Um, and from those project ideas, the residents narrowed them down through this um, 
through all of this engagement to nine different projects. And those nine projects were then submitted to HUD um, to be approved and HUD approved six of them. So um, really, you know, you can see that funnel effect um, that was used. And then now we can get into those six projects that were approved and are now being implemented or have been implemented into the neighborhood. So first, um, if you've driven on 27th Street in the past year, you'll, you'll see that um, there are planters there um, surrounded by these plastic bollards. So those white poles that stick up, um, they serve as curb bump outs and we partnered with the city to implement those and then um, partnered with Keeper Goals to order those um, actual cinder block planters and then that have the you know neighborhood name on them, the near west side branding is always um, important for people to know where they are. Um, and then also partnered with David J. Frank landscape, Landscaping to um, implement these floral, beautiful floral designs, as well as some winter floral arrangements that you can see currently. They're like evergreens. So trying to keep um, seasonal as well. Um, but these planters do a really good job of slowing down traffic, reducing accidents. We've seen this um, since their implementation, as well as make it safer for pedestrians to walk um, at, at these busy intersections along 27th Street. You know, people are coming off the interstate and so really slowing down that traffic and making it safer for both drivers and pedestrians has been a focus of this project, um, as well as beautification. So having some, some nice plants to look at is always a plus. Um, so that's been a really successful project that other neighborhoods have been interested in implementing as well. Um, and yeah, we're, we're excited for the spring flowers to be um, installed in the next couple, coming months as well. So the second project, the second action activity um, was done over at Fats Triangle. So we call this triangle median over at North 35th and West State Street Fats Triangle because originally there was a tree in the center of it um, that was actually um, in honor of E. Joe Fats Hankey, who was, um, he was a part of the State Street Advancement Association, which um, was a neighborhood association that really focused on safety and the advancement of the neighborhood. Um, that neighborhood association is no longer in existence, and a lot of the residents felt that um, with the tree actually kind of dying at that point and no one knowing um, about um, Hanky anymore in light of the organization not existing anymore, that doing something productive with that space that aligned with that organization's mission um, really made a lot of sense. So this project kind of had two phases. The first phase was to create um, a bioswell. So you can see that there's a divot on the left side of the triangle that um, that was created for rainwater collection. Um, so environmentally, it made a lot of sense and also safety wise for people driving by um, for rainwater to be collected in a more um, efficient way. And then the plants that you see are native to Wisconsin, native to Milwaukee, so um, environmentally focused as well. And then the phase, the second phase of it, um, we partnered with Green Fire to put in these cinder block benches and um, expand the sidewalk to make it easier for people to wait for the bus stop and safer for them to walk through, um, as well as lit bollards to make, um, you know, lighting more accessible there. Um, and the Voices of the City project is on those, um, those cinder blocks that you can see that, that are colorful. So if you um, ever drove past the chain link fence on 27th in Wisconsin near the Grand Avenue School, that um, project is now moved. So now it's at 35th and State Street. Um, and yeah, we, we partnered with Green Fire and Quorum, uh, the city, as well as the Milwaukee um, Sewerage District for this project. And the artists of that, the Voices of the City project is La Familia de Arte. So you can see all of our partners present in this photo for our ribbon cutting on November 3rd. We commemorated the end of that project um, and it was really a good example of using, um, just turning a space that might not have been utilized before into something that's meaningful um, for the community. The third action activity project is the new state music park. So this project really came out of um, 
the idea for it came out of a fire that happened at the historic state theater building along that um, street. And so John Hennessy, who leads this project, really wanted him and his um, him and the West Side Arts um, group wanted to honor that tradition of you know having this be a music hub so the new state music park will be an outdoor auditorium for that will seat um 400 people and it will be kind of a family-friendly space for live music and programming um and it's currently under construction so we'll we're hoping that by this summer we'll all be able to enjoy the warm weather and enjoy some live music um which will be really exciting so and here you can see that um, the gold shovel ceremony happened in September during your West Side Week. So that was kind of our kickoff event um, and started the construction process. So definitely more to come for this project. Um, it's really exciting to see um, some, you know, music and, and just having some arts in, in that way as well. Uh, and here's the rendering for it. So on the right, you can see um, where that auditorium is going to be. And then a cafe also to the left of it. Um, so the third project that we have is, or fourth project is the Neighborhood Markers Project. So this is another action activity. Um, and the artists for this project are Brandon Minga and Andre St. Louis. And they really wanted this project to also engage residents and make sure that um, they got a lot of feedback. So just to explain a little bit, these neighborhood markers, as we call them, are 12 foot structures that contain information about each specific neighborhood. So there will be seven of them throughout the nearest side for each of the seven neighborhoods. And um, something important to note is that each of the neighborhoods have their own unique history, their own unique um, features. And so that will be featured not only in the descriptions that are on each of the markers, but also um, in the design of them. And so the artist got um, feedback on the colors of the markers, what kind of um, attachments should be on them, what the descriptions of the neighborhoods should actually say, if there was any history that we missed. Um, and then the another side of the marker is the indigenous people's history. So really honoring the land that we the near west side is is on and um recognizing the people that have historically and also um still live here to this day so that includes menominee Potawatomi, ho-chunk and anishinaabe and more um and here you can see the list of where all of these markers will be they kind of serve as like a gateway to each of the seven neighborhoods um so again these will be installed in early summer, probably around late May, early June. And so we'll have um, some events kind of commemorating this project as well. Um, the Storefront Improvement Program is another action activity that is ongoing. Um, so 10 storefronts are being renovated and this kind of gets at that goal of economic development. We really want um, these buildings that might not have been used in the past or are currently available to be um, renovated. And hopefully that facade improvement will attract new businesses into the near west side. And so this is um, one of the projects that you see um, pictured here is at 800 North 27th Street. So this building was um, previously vacant and now American Family Insurance currently um, occupies it. and. I also have pictures of the inside of the building that you can see there were other improvements done. Um, so really trying to invest in, in the neighborhood in that way and attract um, some new businesses. Um, and so the sixth project actually, so this is the last one, last action activity is painting the near west side. So this is a mural project we had um, eight murals um, planned. And so six of those have been installed. Two of them will be installed. We wanted to wait till the winter pass for those um, to install them. And they all have different artists. Um, they're all, almost all of them are local to Milwaukee, um, which is, you know, just really important to, to keep it local. Um, and so this first one you see here is actually on that building that I just showed you. It's on the building at 800 North 27th Street. It's on the east side. And so this is by Autumn Meredith's mural. Um, she really wanted to honor 
you know, women and honor um, our mothers and grandmothers and just um, they're all facing the same direction as like a moving forward kind of theme. Um, the second one is Amar, I'm going to butcher this, Nisoroma's mural at 27th in Wisconsin. So this is on the police evidence building. Um, and MPD was really excited to have um, some community art on that building because it's it's a huge building and, and wasn't being utilized. So um, this mural is really interesting because the people that are featured in it are actual residents of the Near West Side. They're not just you know, random people. Um, the artist intentionally um, found found residents and painted them and um, included them in the mural. So, and it also acknowledges the seven neighborhoods and, as well as um, the anchor institutions and important architectural buildings throughout the neighborhood. So it's really just highlights a lot of important parts of the Near West Side. Um, Jenny Gao's mural at Pete's Pops on Valite Street, so near 38th and Valite. Um, she wanted to have the mechanical bull kind of symbolize the year of um, 2020 and how we had to adjust and change and um, all of that during the pandemic. So kind of a resilience um, nod. And then Fred Kames mural at 35th and Park Hill. So this is right off the interstate. Um, you might've seen it, it's very colorful, very very bright. Um, and it highlights the Merrill Park neighborhood and those houses that are painted on there um, are actual houses of the neighborhood that he wanted to include. And this is the only mural that we have actually that's painted directly on the building. The other ones are either painted on panels that were installed or they're painted and then taken a picture of and then printed on a screen and then attached to the building. Um, so it's interesting to see the different ways that murals have been um, installed throughout the neighborhood. And this one, the residents throughout um, Fred's process of painting the building were able to go up to him and talk to him about his process, talk to him about the mural and where it all came from. And, and he um, said that he got a lot of positive feedback during that process, just people really excited to see something going up um, on that building. So that was cool feedback to hear. Um, Rosie Petrie's mural of Tommy and Hank Aaron. So this is on Clybourne. Um, it's near 24th and Clybourne, I believe. And so you can see this one also from the interstate. Um, and just along Clybourne, it's, it's really cool to see one of these big warehouse buildings have some color um, to it and, and honor the importance of baseball that we have in Milwaukee. So, and then the last mural that I'll highlight um, that's installed, so this is the sixth one that's been installed for the, for the Action Activity Project is Brad Bernard's mural. So this is at the Wisconsin African, African American Women's Center um, on Fleet Street. And so it features four board members um, and three of them were actually founders of the center. Um, and something cool about this mural is that Brad um, had the idea of having paint and sip events. So community members were actually able to help paint this mural and um, contribute to it and, um, and then see it later installed in their own neighborhood. So um, that was definitely a highlight. I know I kind of zipped through all of these, um, but I hope that the overview and the um, context for the for the projects is, is helpful to understand where we're going forward. And we're really excited for um, the projects that will be implemented in the spring and just keep an eye out for events related to those. Um, so if you have any questions in particular, I know we might have some people joining us live. So um, Elizabeth, if there's any questions that you see in either of the chats, um, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, um, people can email me with questions as well. Anne-Marie, I do have one question. Um, are, is there, are there any plans right now to add additional planters to the neighborhood? That's an interesting question. We do have um, a project team right now that's working. It's called Community Corners. So we have this project that came out of our Appreciative Inquiry Summit, which um, so this project is, you know, focused on community corners, focused on figuring out what intersections in the neighborhood are, are dangerous to be driving through or walking through and kind of figuring out what um, the best way to implement a safety response would be. Um, I don't know if there are any intersections that we will be 
putting planters into, but I do know that there is that momentum to address safety on other in, in other intersections. And that might result in planters, that might not. It kind of depends on the layout of the intersection and whether or not um, we're able to actually partner with the city because we had to put in the bollards first before we could put in the planters. So it's kind of a, a process, right, of making sure that some things are in place um, before implementing those. But um, I will say that a lot of people have reached out about that project, um, it's like spanning past the near west side. So a lot of other neighborhoods might potentially implement planters as well. But as far as here in the near west side, um, we don't have anything currently in the works um, for planters, but hopefully, I think one day <laughs> we could have Thank more. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Thank you. No problem. Um, well, if there's no other questions right now in terms of li the live um, stream, then I feel like we can wrap up. But again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, about any of the projects. Um, they're all very exciting in their own way. And so I'd be happy to um, answer any further questions. <laughs>